Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geekabout, I am Penge and we are here with Farm Manager 2018 and this is the full version of Farm Manager 2018. It is due to come out on April the 6th 2018 which is tomorrow as this video is published but we have got our hands on it a little bit early courtesy of the developer so thank you very much developer folks, it is most appreciated. So over the coming sort of weeks and months I am definitely going to be having a go at free mode of the full version of the game because we played free mode in the demo version and I want to see how it compares. Uh, also, I'd quite like to have a go at the campaign at some point and there's quite a lot of scenarios now so it might be quite fun to have a go at one or two of those as well just to see how we get on. So if that sounds like something you are interested in then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on with our Farm Manager 2018 career. But this particular video is just going to be a quick look at what is different between the demo version which is what we played previously and the full version which is what this one is so immediately there is a campaign mode so the differences are there's a campaign mode there's more scenarios and there's more stuff actually in the game to build so i think what we'll start off with let's go and take a quick look at the campaign mode and just see how that looks Okay, so as you might expect, the campaign mode takes you through a number of different bits. They're called chapters in this. I guess there's five of them, I assume. If that's chapter one circle highlighted there, I guess it goes all the way up to chapter five. And uh, yes, here is our person. He is telling you a little story about a hurricane that destroyed the family farm. And then there are goals to get things back. So the current goals for this first particular bit of the campaign mode would be build a small warehouse, build them in your storage and fix the farm owner's house. But other than that, it's kind of the same sort of thing that we're expecting that we've seen before. It's got the stuff. Oh, wow, they've adjusted the scroll speed. I think that's quite nice. That's quite a nice touch. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of what we've seen before. It's what we've seen already. But uh, in the story mode, everything looks a little bit dilapidated because a hurricane has come through and destroyed everything. Now, I don't think we get the full range of everything in the campaign mode. No, we don't get the full range of things. Like, you can't buy vehicles, and I bet some of the building things aren't available and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, there's only one type of building available. That's the cow shed. We'll come back and look at the rest of the buildings later. It's jolly exciting. So, um, yeah, the campaign mode will just take you through those different bits. And there is a story attached, which is absolutely fine. And, yeah, I think that sounds good. I think that sounds like a good thing. Oh, dear. The barn has seen better days. However, I'm very pleased to say that there is still a lot of attention to detail. Look at this. Look at that. Look at the attention to detail on the wood of the barn doors. That is lovely. Oh dear, and that one's fallen off. So uh, yeah, the campaign mode I think we'll definitely be having a go at. But there we go. So it'll take you through various bits. And I imagine it's probably kind of a learning experience. It'll probably tell you how to do various bits and bobs. How to do, you know, plow the fields and how to look after the animals and that kind of thing. Okay, so that's campaign mode. Let's go through and take a look at the scenarios that are available. They've really gone to town on the scenarios. There was one in the demo version, but now there are 15, which is jolly exciting. And they're all quite varied. This one here, you have to save a farm from bankruptcy. This one, you have to build a farm of a certain size. This one seems very specific. The land of milk and honey. The Ministry of Agriculture predicts a huge increase in the demand for milk and honey in the coming years. So you'd have to build a farm specifically targeting milk and honey. Uh, this one's to do with fruit, and this one's to do with veg. That was the one that was in the demo version. There's an eco farm one. There's one about bread and all that kind of stuff so yeah they're very varied i quite like that i think that's a good thing that's a good thing that we've got all these in because once you've sort of exhausted the free mode of the campaign you're kind of giving yourself a enforced challenge if you like via a scenario and that's a good thing it keeps the game sort of fresh and makes you do things a bit different so i think we're going to tackle a couple of these over the coming sort of months perhaps on the channel so yeah, i might put a little vote out and say which which one do you think we should do and we can have a go at that and i shall let you lovely people decide so that's the scenarios and now we're going to go into free mode. This is kind of the exciting bit, really. We're going to go into free mode and have a look at all the exciting new things that we can build and grow and rear and look after and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so everything looks the same as it did before. Plot of land, road down the middle. Let's go and have a look at the new buildings that we can build. So let's start with the animals one and it's very exciting. So immediately the first thing you can see is a small rabbit warren. So there's rabbits, there's rabbits in the game which is jolly exciting and there's a larger version as well that you can build. Presumably you have to unlock that via the training. Indeed it says you need to do it just there. Uh, there's the beekeeper that we saw before, the beekeeper building, the chicken coop but now that's got extra things in. Look, it looks like it's got turkeys and ducks and another thing in there that I don't know what that is but that's very exciting that's very cool so yeah that's good poultry farming is involved uh, the cow shed we saw that before there's a pigsty for pigs which is good and then there's a small shed and that is for goats 
and sheep. And then there's obviously the slightly larger equivalents of all those. You can sort of uh, unlock them via your sort of researchy kind of stuff. So that's good. I think houses are pretty much the same. Yeah, you've got the uh, house for permanent employees, the seasonal ones, and then my house, my fancy pants, slightly excessive house. The garages are slightly different now as well. You've got a small garage, so just like a covered, as they call it, a wooden carport there, which is fine. Then you've got the medium brick garage, which we did see in the last sort of demo build. And then we've got a carport, so it's a big version of that. So that's like a small carport. That's a big carport that can hold three large things. And then that, the sort of the big concrete block, if you like, uh, is for the big large agricultural machine so that's kind of if you combine harvesters and kind of stuff like that that don't fit anywhere else so yeah a couple of new buildings there the small garage and the carport and now this this is where stuff starts getting actually quite interesting production let's click on this and just take a look at how much has changed in here before i think there was possibly silage and a mill now there is an awful lot in here and it's very exciting it's very exciting still got the silage however now a small frozen food factory so currently in here, you can put frozen cherries, frozen raspberries, and frozen strawberries, which is exciting. And already, that tells you there's raspberries, strawberries, and cherries in the game. Then here we've got a milk processing plant, so we can make different cheeses, which is jolly exciting. Just here, a small slaughterhouse. I mean, yeah, okay, if you're vegetarian or vegan or whatever, I'm sorry, but it's in the game, and there we go. So yeah, look, you can kill all the things. You can uh, produce meat from the chickens and cows and ducks and goats and whatever else there is there, pigs and all that kind of stuff. So that's very exciting. Uh, a bigger milk processing plant, I think. There is a seeds and seedling production place. You can make your own seeds. You don't need to buy them in anymore. Uh, there's the mill that we saw before. And then there's a juice factory. So you can turn your apples, cherries and tomatoes into juice. So that's a small one. That's a large one. And then there's a slaughterhouse, which is a bigger version of the small slaughterhouse. And then a frozen food factory, which is a bigger version of the small frozen food factory. That's jolly exciting. You can do an awful lot with these. An awful lot now with all the stuff. Rather than before just selling it, I think now really the big thing is going to be making... So you're going to you know grow crops or grow fruit or whatever or get animals. And then you're going to do something with the products. Rather than just sell the raw end result, you're going to actually go and do something with it. Which is very exciting. That is very expensive. The milk processing plant, the full one, is very expensive. Okay, warehouses. I think there's a few extra ones. Yes. So there's different types of silo now. There's a small, medium, large. We've still got the manure storage, we've still got the small warehouse and the barn, but also, it's quite expensive, but there is a huge warehouse with cooling, so it keeps things for longer, which is jolly exciting. You can have frozen food in there as well. So yeah, a huge warehouse with a powerful cooler adapted to hold products at low temperatures with a capacity of 250,000 units, which is very spacious as well, but it does cost quite a bit. So that's a new building. That's good, as well as the silos. And I think all these are pretty much the same sort of thing. Yeah, there's a, there's a pump there allows uh, increasing access to water for irrigation but i think everything else is pretty much the same sort of thing with the fences and the little flower pots and the things like that little arbors and things like that that's all kind of the same now if we nip into the market we can then have a look at what we can buy which is jolly exciting so let's go to seeds and plants now we can immediately see there is some new stuff so apple trees lupine we saw before there's buckwheat there is cabbage cherries colza i don't even know what colza is corn you can actually get corn in now cucumbers uh, there's grass we saw before there's oat and then you can get into like veg there's red peppers there's pears there's potatoes uh, pumpkins which we saw before there's raspberry bushes sorghum seed i don't know what that is uh there's oh that's gone away to the top uh, there are strawberries, sunflowers, which is lovely, uh, tomato seedlings, which we've seen, wheat and rye. And that's only the seeds and plants. Uh, foliages is just those sort of same things, but what comes off of those plants. So all the same sort of stuff. But look, we can actually get corn now. We can actually get corn. So when the little thing pops up in the corner and says, hey, you need to, uh, the challenge is to get some corn. We can actually do that, which is jolly exciting. And uh, yeah, there's more types of milk now because I've added goats and sheep. So different types of milk and it seems that the goat's milk is very very profitable in this particular game and over in the machine market there are new machines for us to buy and it's jolly exciting so there's a xena combine which we saw before but there is also this thing here the self-propelled forage harvester so if something must shoot out there and go into the back it needs a tractor and a trailer so i think that's like straw and stuff and then there is a new combine harvester it's bigger it's more expensive but can have more attachments that are presumably bigger that can get the job done quicker there is also if i can find tractors a new tractor 
There's an Etos tractor, which is 60 grand, which is bigger than the other tractor. I assume it's just a little bit more resilient. I don't think it has any more sort of attachments. I don't think it does anything different. It's probably just a bit bigger and a bit more resilient. And there is a specific orchard tractor to drive through orchards with, which is jolly exciting. And if I can find it on here, if I can find the sprayers, there is a now a specific orchard sprayer. So um, before, you couldn't really do anything with the orchards. You had to go through and manually do it. You had to go through and manually sort of spray them by hand and stuff. But yeah, now there is an actual specific orchard sprayer that you can use for the orchard. And I think everything else is kind of what you'd expect. There's some new attachment headers for the um, for the new combines and to deal with the new sort of crops that we've got. That's absolutely fine. I don't think there's anything else in there that that is of any sort of great note. There's there's different plows and things like that. But there's nothing in there that's a great surprise other than the new tractors which is very exciting. I like the orchard tract as well. That looks quite good. I like that. I like that a lot. I suppose, yes, it's got to be like that so it doesn't get caught up in all the branches of the trees. But yeah, everything else, there's, there's new stuff here. So there's like the potato planter if you want to plant the potatoes and stuff like that that you know, suits the new crops that we've got. But other than that, I think it's pretty much the same sort of stuff that we saw before. And that is it for now. Just a very quick look at all the new buildings and crops and animals and game modes and all that kind of stuff that the full version of Farm Manager 2018 is going to bring to us. And I have to say it looks very, very exciting. I like the new animals. The new animals is good. But I think the most exciting thing is possibly the new processing sort of production centres. I like the idea of being able to take the stuff you've grown on your farm and then turn it into something else and sell it for a little bit more money, like growing apples and turning it into an apple drink or, you know, getting the milk, turning it into cheese or having frozen goods or whatever. I think that's probably a more accurate depiction of modern farming. And I quite like the fact that's been included. It gives you some more options rather than just going, right, I've grown some stuff, let's sell it. You can now sell it if you want, or you could sell some of it and keep some of it to turn into, you know, whatever, fruit juice or whatever it is. And I quite like that. I like those options. I think it should be very interesting to play with those. So the current plan is we are going to start a new series in free mode, because I think free mode is probably the best version of the game, I would say. You know, you're not constrained by any of the rules of the campaign or the scenarios. You can build what you like and you can make a good go of it. And you can make your own plans and do various different things in free mode. It's a bit more open. Well, it's entirely open because that's the whole point of a free mode, isn't it, I suppose? So we should be doing that. Hopefully I will try and get a video out for that tonight, if at all possible. If not, it'll be tomorrow night and then, you know, across the, the, the coming weeks until it finishes or until I go bankrupt, which is increasingly likely. Um, also, the scenarios, I'm going to tackle a couple of those, as I mentioned earlier on. I will let you lovely people pick which ones I'm going to do, because that's good, because that gets you guys involved and gives you some influence over the farm and the Farm Manager 2018 sort of series as they go along. And then we might come to the campaign at some other point. So hopefully you have enjoyed this little look at Farm Manager 2018 and what it is going to bring to us. If you have, please do leave a like and also please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on on our farm. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. Let's follow Matt Spence, aka Duke Nukem, as he chases after a dirty villain. There are a lot of angry people still. I don't know why. Never ever employ him, he's terrible. This place is full of rats. Timothy Robles with your kind of crazy eyes. You have tea leaves in one of my shops.